Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today on Melanie's Math, we're going to be talking about circle graphs. And as always, if you want to follow along with the worksheet that we'll be using, you can find it at the first link in the description below. Okay, so we see circle graphs quite often, and the reason is because they're good for showing parts of a whole. And man, you can do a lot with a good circle graph. So um, we're going to take a look at a few example questions and see if we can figure, um, figure out the answers. Now, a few of these are a little bit weird, so let's just take these one at a time. As always, when you see a graph, see what information they give you. Sometimes they give you a lot, sometimes they don't. It looks like they've given us some percentages and it looks like it's subjects in school. Uh, we don't really have any other information. And in fact, one that's weird is uh, the mathematics slice of the pie is missing. They don't actually give that percentage. And sure enough, that's the very first question. It says, what percentage of students like math the most? Well, one thing you have to know about circle graphs is that the whole thing has to add up to 100%. Okay. So if I think about that, the whole thing has to add up to 100%. How much do the other categories account for? Like if you take um, the numbers for history, literature, Spanish, and science, and you add them all up, that's gonna be 76% total. So there's 100% in the circle, and we have 76% that's accounted for, and so what does that leave over? Well, 24% must be math. That doesn't seem right. 24% of kids like math the most? I don't know if I believe that or not. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm just here to show you how to get the right answer. Okay, uh, number two says, what percentage like science or literature the most? So a lot of times you'll get one of those where it's like, what's the percentage of this or this happening? Just add them together, okay? So get the number for science, uh, which was 19%, um, and then add it to the literature number, which was 15%. So what percentage of kids liked one or the other of those? If you add them together, it's 34% of students were either liking science or literature. Okay. Number three is actually a little bit of a tricky question. You have to make sure you understand what they're asking. They say, if 600 students were surveyed, how many of them like Spanish? Well, I know that 16% of them do, but what is that if the whole number is 600? And we did this um, in a couple videos back where we did an intro to percentages. I'll try to remember to link that below as well. Um, but basically all you have to do um, is multiply. So take the percentage as a decimal and the number for Spanish was 16%, but as a decimal, that would be 0.16 and then just multiply it by the whole number. In this case, there were 600 students. And if you grab a calculator and multiply that out, that is 96 students. So 96 students liked Spanish the most. In other words, 16% of 600 is 96 students take that to kind of go with number four, where it says, how many more students like history than Spanish? Okay. Well, I know that there's 96 students that like Spanish. That was for number three, but I don't know how many like history. We can do the same thing though. Take the history percentage as a decimal. So 26% becomes 0.26 and multiply it by the whole body, the whole number of students, which in this example is 600. So if you multiply that out, you're going to get 156 students. Okay, now we're not quite done. That's 156 students that like history. But the question says, how many more students like history than Spanish? So really they're saying, how does that 156 compare to the 96? So if we do 156, so find the difference, subtract 96 we're going to get 60 students. In other words, the difference between the two is 60 students. Okay. All right. Let's move over to another graph. Now, this one is still a circle graph, but it's not listing the percentages. Okay. So if I take a glance at that, it looks like it's some different sports and this looks like raw data. In other words, I'm assuming they surveyed some students or something. And what's your favorite sport? 19 of them picked bowling, 22 of them picked baseball, and so on. This is not already figured out as a percentage. So number five says, how many total students were surveyed? How would you figure that out? Obviously, you're just going to add them all up, all right? So if you add up all uh, five of those numbers, you're going to get 100. Now, 
We can use that to help us answer number six. What percent like basketball the most? Well, 18 of them did, right? So it's kind of like saying 18 out of 100 do. Now remember, if you want it as a percentage, you always have to multiply by 100. So 18 divided by 100 times 100 is 18. So 18%. Okay, how about number seven? It says, what percentage like baseball or tennis the most? Okay, so if you take the baseball number, which was 22, and you add it to tennis, which is 24, you're gonna get 46. So 46 out of 100 times 100 is gonna give you 46%. So 46% of the students are liking baseball or tennis. So as you can see, some of these questions, they don't, even though it's a pie chart or a circle graph, they don't actually give you the percentages and they ask you to calculate them. So again, just keep that in mind. How about number eight? Which sport had the smallest percentage of likes? Well, you could convert each one of those as a to a percentage, or you could kind of just glance at them and notice that the smallest number up there is football. So obviously as a percentage, it's also going to be the smallest. So the answer would be football. Okay, now I would say go ahead and pause the video there. Um, if you've downloaded the worksheet, you can see that there are some other questions here for you. So hopefully this video was helpful, and if it was, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.